What's going on guys? Matt Downs with Trick Tens. Today I'm going to show you guys something very simple. It's going to be a short video. Now this is my personal boat right here beside and I built this boat for my wife. It already had a bilge pump in here. The bilge pump is ran to a switch that is just an on off switch. I do not like having a bilge pump that I have to turn on because sometimes we leave this boat in the water overnight. So I want to install a bilge pump that actually has a float in it. Now this bilge pump that we're going to be putting in here is pretty simple. It's 500 per gallon hour and it has a submersible bilge pump with a cartridge combo. Now this thing is an automatic. That's going to allow it to come on. It has a float in here. As you can see, it's pretty simple. It has this little black piece on the side right here. And this is basically the float. It's got a little finger trigger on the side. That way you can test it and make sure it is working. Now I'm gonna have to upgrade the switch. I don't have a three-way switch right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hook it up. That way I'm gonna leave it on the on position. And then if it gets water in there, it'll automatically click on. And I can always test it to make sure that it's gonna come on just by lifting that little trigger up. So the first thing I gotta do is I'm gonna open up the back here. I've got three big batteries inside of here, and then there's a metal tray in here. Now a lot of these bass boats are set up similar to this, where they have like a removable tray that holds your batteries, and underneath that is where your bilge pump is at. Some of the receivers for the transducers and the fish finders and stuff are underneath there. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get in there. I gotta take all these batteries out and disconnect them. That way I can get in there. Let's get all this stuff pulled out and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside. Let's get back to work. All right, so as you can see, we do already have a bilge pump in here and there's a float in here, but this float is not working apparently. Instead of trying to chase these wires and figure out what's going on with it, I'm just going to remove the float and the spillage pump, and then I'll hook a new one in. Let's get back to work. So I'm going to show you what we did here. It's very simple. Um, these wires actually are wired together. The red ones coming out of here, they're actually brown. You can see right here, they come wired together. And it has one coming out the other end. So I just took the other end of that and connected it right here to the existing cable that was already ran in here that goes to the switch for the positive. And then the negatives are the same way. They both come up here from the billage pump and from the float switch into one. And I ran that into the negative that goes up with the switch panel also. Then we have one more cable, which is the one that's marked. It says right on it. I don't know if you can read that, but it says connect it directly to the battery. So this is that cable. I had to extend it a little bit. Put an extension on it right there because it wasn't quite long enough. But obviously my batteries are in here, so I'm using jumper cables. Got my battery sitting right there. So this is the one for the float. If we connect this one in here and put the flip of switch on, it's pretty simple, it's working. So what that does, that little switch is basically just like a little knob on the side of the plastic float that comes up and down vertically when water gets in here. So what happens if you leave your boat out in the rain, fills it up, or if you take on a little bit too much water and you weren't expecting it, that thing will automatically kick on and pump it out of here. The only downside about running it the way I did in my boat is I've got to have this switch on up here for it to work. Now, most of the time when I have my boat hooked up with, I'm worried about the bilge pump, I have the thing plugged in with the battery tender. So it's not a huge deal for me, but looking back at it, all you would have had to do would be to split the black wire coming from the float and run that directly to the negative on the battery and then it should have jump started the whole thing going so anyways guys i'm gonna put all these batteries back in here and clean all this up and i'll show you what we got let's get back to work all right so you can see what we got here we have my tender over there in the corner i just plugged that in and two of my batteries are full and one of them is charging now the two that are full are these two right here. You can see those only have the cables on them for the trolling motors, 24 volt trolling motor. And then it has the battery tender cables on each one of those. This is my main starting and cranking battery right here. Now there's a lot of stuff coming into here. I've got a lot of electronics running into this boat. 
but everything works out perfectly the way it's set up. I'm gonna come back and clean this wire up with some loom in here, but I just double checked everything and it works perfectly. This is the one cable right here coming from the float switch. And what that does is when that float comes up, it bypasses the switch and tells that pump to kick on. It's pretty simple. All right, so that is all finished up. I'm glad that it's hooked up. It gives me the peace of mind to know that when I park my boat at the dock overnight and we get a bad rainstorm, I don't have to worry about it getting flooded out. While I was in there, I also changed out this fuse panel right here, which is for my trolling motor. As you can see, this thing is pretty rusty. I could not even get this nut off of here to get the piece off of it with the wire. So I just took this thing out and replaced it with a brand new one, put some new terminals on there. And that is gonna give me peace of mind knowing that my trolling motor is not gonna have any issues. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment. Let me know if you have any questions or if you've ever had to deal with this before. I'll see you guys next time. I gotta get back to work.